we're able to have uh, Chris present here. Um, I was telling someone just last week we have a um, we have a presenter from a, a top bank in the Philippines, and without me saying the name, they immediately asked, "Oh, is it Union Bank in the Philippines?" So uh, I'm, I'm, I think that's great validation that um, that Union Bank is a, is a leader in um, particularly in, in digital banking. Um, and uh, so very, very pleased to, to welcome Chris. Hi. Do you want to share your, your screen now, Chris? Yep. Can you see my screen now? Yes, it's just coming up. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so this is Chris Tismo. I'm from Union Bank, and I'm here to discuss um, how APIs help our bank uh, in our uh, digital transformation. But I think let me first start with something that's um, very familiar and very real to, if not to all of us, but most of us. So COVID has put the world to a halt. The Philippines, the second largest archipelago in the world is facing a humanitarian challenge. So in March, uh, the lockdown in the Philippines started uh, with more than 7,000 islands and stripped of the usual community. Financial help is very difficult to send and receive, uh, especially to more than 51 million unbanked Filipinos. Um, 51 million unbanked Filipinos is like 70% of the uh, adult Filipino population. Um, so with, with the lockdown, jobs lost, their income lost, the bills to pay on children to feed money is desperately needed. So for most of the Filipinos living across the archipelago, Millions of families, millions of lives await for the financial help that is to be sent by relatives from Manila, from other countries. So, um, but the problem was how do you send money across the nation if 70% of the population is unbanked? Meaning they don't have access to, they, they don't have a bank account. They, 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 don't, they don't have banks. And um, so that was a problem that was uh, facing us. Um, during the lockdown, I think, I think the first week of the lockdown, our, our CEO, um, Edwin Bautista, uh, gave us this mandate. Find a way for financial help to be sent and received with the bank across the entire country, the fastest way possible. So that was what that was given to us. Um, we, we were called and we were, this was, this was the mandate. So for us, uh, the belief is that in this time of pandemic, meaningful solution should be the most valuable currency. Um, so we, we, we went out, we, as, and we, as we are trusting to the new normal, what we found out is and when we began to assess the society and, our, and how our community operates, most of the Filipinos use the neighborhood pawn shops and remittance centers. That's a channel that they use. So leveraging on these brick and mortar shops that are spread nationwide, we have tapped into the infrastructure and integrated our digital process systems. From the moment that we were called and we were told we had to do it, it took us three weeks to make it happen. In three weeks, Filipinos are able to send financial help. That three weeks consists of planning and design, talking to partners, the, the, the pawn shops, and the, um, the actual implementation, that's development, testing, and deployment to production. But, and this solution is done real time. There are no manual processes involved. I, I, I wanted to, to tell you this journey so that it gives, it gives a face to what we do and then uh, how we do it. The three faster around time was possible because of the years we spent in our digital transformation. So that three weeks is a three weeks it's three weeks because we prepared. When the pandemic hit, we were prepared. So how did we do it? How did we come to the position to be able to do something like that? If you know, if you know banking in the Philippines, you know that three weeks was it's nothing short of a miracle for us to be able Chris, to accomplish. Chris, yeah? I, hate, I hate to interrupt, but um, we, we seem to have lost your camera. And, oh. uh, and then also there is a little uh, sharing button at the bottom there. If you hover over it, you'll be able to hide okay. it. 
Can you hide it? Yeah. Yep, I did. Okay. Uh, I still can't see your camera. Oh. Oh, okay, you're back. All right. Okay, okay. thanks very much. Okay. Okay, so, oh, so let me share with you the journey and let me share with you how we did it. Um, of course, I think any any change and any digital transformation uh, has has to start from the top. So in this um, uh, in this uh, slide, you can see our chairman, Dr. Justo Ortiz, attending a robotics class uh, given to our top executives. I, th I think this is a one day class. They were told they were um, they were taught how to do basic programming and robotics. But this is this is the commitment that our top management is, is giving the digital trans transformation that the bank um, was embar embarking on. Um, there needed to be a change in process. Uh, the bank was so used to the waterfall approach. Uh, we were so used to completing like a hundred page of document uh, before actually starting a project. An exercise that can take weeks or months. Um, and it's something that we, we've, we're so used to doing. Requirements that may be outdated by the time we, we, we finish them, and then we'd have to do change requests. And this change in process is not a change that we that is solely a technical or a technology change. The, the change in process included the business centers, included our HR, included everyone in the bank. So this was something that we had to do as a bank not just a technology, not just for the IT people. And then in 2016, we had to lay down the foundation. Uh, we started building our enterprise architecture uh, blueprint. This is, uh, we, we had to assess where we are and then where we want to be. We had to know what we have and what we needed to build to be what we want to be and where we want to be. So this, until now, we still go back to this blueprint and say, what do we still lack? What do we still have to do? And then we started automating our business processes, uh, the, the, the back office, the, the things that are done that's not something that the client sees. And then we, invest, we, 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 we invested in an API management platform. Uh, I'll discuss that more in the next slide. Then, um, as, as discussed, we had to know our data and we had to work with the data that we're getting to be able to um, um, circle back to what we wanted and to what we have. I'm showing you this to tell you that API helped, uh, and it's one of the it's one of the um, foundations that uh, where we built what we have now. But it takes a lot more than that. So, uh, speaking of APIs, in 2016, uh, as, as everyone I think have mentioned, APIs are not new. We had APIs. We knew what APIs were. We've, I have coded APIs. But we've done it siloed. Uh, one API call calls another AP, uh, another system in the bank. And in a system that's in, in, in a complex company, we'd have many small systems. And this is how it's done. It's very siloed. Um, so what did we do? We said, okay, we're getting, a, we, we will have an integration platform. We decided that all communication between uh, this small systems will pass through our API. Um, it's uh, not, no communication between any system is gonna be done without passing through the APIs. Why does it help? Any change in the other system will only mean a change in this API platform and not have and not need to change um, the uh, the platforms, uh, the applications on your left. The, this change in mindset, this change in in, the, in our applic infrastructure, uh, gave way to some of the digital um, the digitization that the back end worked on. So we went from physical to virtual. The, it's, uh, we had Eon Banking, the first selfie banking in Asia. We had Rafa, our first banking chatbot in the Philippines. We we introduced, we engineered, and we reintroduced our mobile banking. Uh, it's one of the uh, most um, award-winning uh, apps in the Philippines now. We also had a platform for our SMEs and the suppliers. So this is like very, uh, this is a marketplace for all of them. 
um, we've also transformed our branches. We did uh, we did a space and branch transformation. So this is what our branch looks like now. So it's a it's a it's a place where people can go and not feel like you're in a bank. We introduced Eve, our robot, um, coffee sweet showcase cars in our branches. Um, we we have we sell things in our branches. We there's we convert this in, in, into a showroom sometimes at night. There, there are cocktails and um, this. And I think what we all need to understand is we're still that's our CEO uh, in with in one of our crypto ATMs. Um, we're we're still. I think what people need to understand is until now we're still using the same core banking system that we are using 20, uh, in 2016. But what made a difference is we used APIs. We exposed the APIs of those core banking system for us to be able to modernize our front end system. So this is using the same core banking, leverage on exposing the functionalities and APIs, and then um, transforming all of the customer facing, um, uh, all of our customer facing apps. Sorry. So we also have our AI initiative. So, so Rafa, our chatbot. Uh, Max is the, the app that our um, sales part partners are using when they when when they when they uh, go to our clients. And then of uh, last last quarter of last year, we introduced Eve. Uh, it's our robot assistant in our branches. So uh, this is leveraging again on our APIs. So this, how does this translate to our APIs? Uh, in March 2019, uh, the API calls per month of the bank is around 35.8 million. By March 2020, we've grown to 97.8 million API calls a month. Uh, the last time I checked, I think um, for, for June, I, we're, we're up to 150 million a month. This is uh, calling over 2,000 APIs. Uh, I use the March uh, data because uh, this is the um, this is the start of the lockdown in the Philippines. So this is the uh, this is what we benchmarked on. But that's a sixty three percent average API call month increase. Uh, the the sign up on our uh, our mobile banking uh, rose to five hundred sixty six percent from March twenty nineteen to March twenty twenty. Also, then the accounts open. These are accounts open digitally, not going to the branch uh, using our app. So from March 2019 to 2020, it, it, uh, we had 2,700 times more applications also. Um, our customer engagement operation, we were able to do a 12 to 12 um, customer engagement team. And this is at the height of, again, uh, people working from home. Uh, our operations team is 100% working from home. Uh, we're practically running the bank from our homes. Uh, what's the result? We have out, our outstanding balances are five times higher. Our spend is seven times higher. And it's translating to 11 times higher revenue. This was a news bit from uh, last year, I think. Union Bank profit up to 104% to reach a record 14 billion. So I think what we needed to um, see also is that this is something that we need to accept. After this, this, this is the new normal. Uh, for now, 80% of our workforce is working from home. I think those that are working are the ones that are in, still in our branches. Uh, they're the ones that had to go on site. Um, but we, during the pandemic, we decided we still need to continue the digital and convenience services during uh, during these times. So this is how we, we envision the journey of a customer needs to happen, circling back to the problem of cash out, of, of giving money to people that do not have bank accounts. So if I were the, if I had the capability to open an account, uh, we let you open an account digitally. And then we partnered with our app, uh, um, logistics, logistics um, uh, 
uh, partners, uh, the, the Grab and the Lalamu for delivery of the carts. Um, and then we're, we allowed uh, check uh, we allowed you to take photos of your check and then deposit it using our app. We've also partnered with 7-Eleven, uh, one of the um, more popular convenience stores in the Philippines, so that you can deposit your accounts. And then you, if if you, the the person you 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 need to transfer money to is has another bank account in another bank, then we use the PesaNet and the InstaPay Rails in the Philippines and allow you to transfer. Uh, but this is how we wanted to service those that do not have bank accounts. So this is how uh, the journey is going to happen. You can now send money to our remittance center from the Union Bank Online app. Um, what we Union Bank received many awards for our digital journey, but I think as as a company, we we knew that this is one of the most important ones. This is an uh, online survey conducted from April 1 to 30 among 11,000 respondents from all over Asia. Union Bank is one of the top three most helpful banks in Asia Pacific during COVID-19. Uh, if, if we had, if, if we wanted to know that we are doing something to help to help in these times, I think this this pretty much uh, tells us that we're somehow making a difference. With what's happening today in the world, will he, will API help change the world? Maybe that's a stretch. Uh, we need we need vaccine. But what we know for sure is this: with the financial help coming through the system we created, it definitely made someone's day better in one of the seven thousand um, islands in the Philippines. One of them is able to get the financial help that they need. The API meant a whole lot better, more for it. It added value, it put things in perspective, and it improved lives. So that's it. Thank you. So thank you, thank you very much, Chris. Uh, yeah. We um, I really appreciate the, um, the insights into how your API capability grew in the bank. Mm -hmm. But also your purpose uh, yeah. in um, in promoting financial inclusion uh, yeah. in in the Philippines, uh, yeah. very um, very very important uh, goal. And mm -hmm. we um, we also have um, a couple of speakers from the the Athen organisation yep. yep. talking about the Apex platform and their goals for for financial inclusion. Um, uh, really, really appreciate that. Um, Thank you.